All right, welcome to the final video for the Maslow CNC. In this video, we're going to be cutting out the final sled design, and we'll walk you through that process. If you notice a change in voice, it's because we recorded a video, but honestly, it took us a little while to finally figure it out, figure out what we were doing, and it was a little choppy, so we decided to re-record this video and my son's busy today, so uh, I'm doing this part for him. So anyway, we're here on the Maslow website. Um, at this point, we've calibrated the machine. We've downloaded all the software. We've got the uh, ground control here. You can kind of see our shortcut there on our desktop. Anyway, uh, we're here on the Maslow website. Go to the Assembly Guy page. And you saw the note on the home page where it uh, looks like they're going to be taking a break for a while. I can definitely understand that. But um, you know, definitely hope they get back soon. I know I'm having a ton of fun with my machine. And I know a lot of other people are enjoying theirs as well. It's a good machine. So we go down here to step five. My internet's being slow today for some reason. And I think we scroll down here to step eight. Come on. I've got a video processing in the background, so I think it's slowing down my uh, computer. All right, next we need to generate the G code. So we go here. We can get the sled files. Go down here, over here to download. Doesn't take but just a second. So now we can click here. I've got multiple monitors. Let me move this over so y'all can see it. <clears throat> All right, so we open up the folder and downloads. Now um, we can go up here to the top. Um, extract all destination to extract that's good everything's wanting to open up on the other side okay so here we go so this is what opened up looks exactly the same obviously except it's extracted all right so we've got these files let's just close out these windows and if we just back up one Go back to the same page, go down here to step eight, go to um, Maker Cam. I actually have a link up here. I could have just went straight there, but using their stuff. So, anyway, okay. Anyway, all right. So, if we click here, go to the Maker Cam website. Now that we're here, okay. just want to make sure we were zoomed in. All right, go to open SVG file, go to file, and then open SVG file. Now we have to find those files that we just had uh, in the downloaded folder. Scroll down until we see it. Sled file, name of that folder, new sled with tool paths. Open it up. And here we are. So this already has all the tool paths generated. Um, so there's not a whole lot of work to do here. You can see that it's shaded in where the pocket operations are. Um, there should be drill operations in all these holes, profile operations, um, pretty much all the work's done for you. So just go to cam, calculate all, and we should see the tool pass now. 
So this, as soon as this is done processing, okay, and that's good. You can see the blue line. That is our tool pass. I can zoom in. You can see a little bit better. Now, the one thing that is missing from here are tabs, and I can tell you after using the machine a few times, they're very important. So, we have different size parts, so we want to create different tab spaces. Um, you only need two or three around this big circle. If you generate more than that, it just gives you a lot more to cut. We're cutting three quarter inch plywood, so you don't need a lot of tabs. So, you can just do the select window and select just your little brick holders here. Go to cam, add tabs to selected, tab spacing five inches. All right, the tab width we found out that's very important. We have um, a quarter inch bit that we're cutting out of and so we want to make sure that that tab width is greater than our bit. I usually set it about an inch. Three quarters would be fine, but one inch gives me less to type. So tab height, quarter of an inch, that's good. Uh, probably not necessary, but you know, you could back it down to 0.2. All right, let's click OK. Now you see the tabs. Obviously, you don't want them in a curve. You can just click them, drag them where you want them. Um, there's honestly not going to be a lot here in the middle. And one reason you don't want a lot of tabs, it just slows down your cutting. Because the machine stops, raises a bit. You know, it's not the fastest machine in the world, but um, you know, it does a good job. But there's no point in slowing it down. So same thing. Let's go back and select this middle circle. Cam. Add tabs to selected. Um, tab width again. You know, one inch is good. Tab spacing five. That's probably good for that. I mean one. Um, I think the tool path ends at the bottom, so if we do it at the top, it'll just kind of hang there. Be a good place for it. All right, so the reason we get them separate is because on this big piece, and you, you're really just selecting the tool path, but it's easier to just select both. It knows the difference. Um, all right, go back. Same thing, cam, add tabs to selected. This time, let's change the tab spacing to, I don't know, let's try 15 inches. Uh, same thing, tab with one, click OK. Yeah, that gave us three tabs at 15, so we have stuck at five, we'd have had, you know, nine or ten tabs, and that's just ridiculous for that piece, especially as thick as it is. If you had a thinner piece, you might would want to add some more, but this is pretty rigid. So we have all the tabs. We're good. So now that we've generated all the tabs, the next thing to do is export our G code. So let's go to CAM, export G code. You see all the different operations that we've done. Uh, sometimes the order is important. Uh, I cut a piece out yesterday and I cut the perimeter out first and then um, when I did that the piece vibrated a lot so it um, not the best thing in the world when you're trying to machine something even though it wasn't that important you know, it's a good lesson you know these large outer profiles always cut them last um, and it does give you the option to name them this doesn't have them named and I I have no way of knowing which way profile one three four five if they were done in order according to the instructions profile five should be the big one so we'll just leave them as it is for this part but just a future reference kind of work from your smallest to your largest do your outside profiles last and then they'll all be in order when you go to export your g-code and you don't have to rearrange them but you can rename them um, here we'll just close this out and I'll show you 
what I'm talking about. You select a part, go to cam, you know, profile option. Up here at the name, you know, profile six, it gives you the um, option to name it. And you can kind of keep track so when you go to export your G code, you'll be able to, you know, see what's what and rearrange them. Um, you know, in order to better suit your process, eliminate some of the problems I've had. So anyway, so we go back to CAM, export G-code, do this again, just click on all right here, and export selected tool pass. Um, now one thing that I found out, one reason you may not want to export them all when you're doing different projects, is you can design it all at one time, but if you have different bits that you want to use, you may export, you know, for the, say, the quarter inch bit, you know, one through three, and then you may have a different bit for profile four and five. You may want to come back and export that later. All your code's the same, start point will be the same, and you'll be able to, you know, just run another operation on the piece you've already cut out with your other bit, and, you know, add a chamfer, you know, do some engraving, whatever it is you want to do. So anyway, okay. Um, we'll just go to desktop here, save this part as um, sled, it's good enough, and just click save. Alright, so now we're done here in the maker cam, no real reason to keep it open. So we can go here to and open up the ground control. All right, so here we have ground control open, finally. Took a second. And um, one thing to note, <coughs> excuse me, right here, ground control 1.13, firmware 1.13. Uh, if you noticed in the calibration video, our firmware we originally started with when we started that video was 1.10, and we had some issues, so we had to go back and um, the 1.13 was drastically better for calibrating and we wish we would have known that in the beginning but anyway um, everything's updated now we're good you can see here in the cut window you know here's a project that I was playing with yesterday I have some different tool paths a little outline of a stealth jet okay so we can go to clear g-code get rid of that and um, all right, here we go. Popped up where it was supposed to be. Now the red cursor is the location of your machine in real time. And now gotta wait for it to move. All right, so that's doing that. We can go to actions. Sorry. Go to open file, wherever you saved your um, G code at. We saved ours to the desktop. One reason it's just easier to find. So we go to desktop right here, sled.nc, select that, then go down here to the select button and select. And there it is. Okay, so I'm gonna stop my sled from moving. <clears throat> All right, so. Um, my home is obviously set way down here. If I want it to the center, I can see that I'm minus 7.11 in the x axis. I can go up here to distance, just type in 7.11, done, move over, that'll return it to zero on the y axis. And then I'm 3.06. In the negative y so 3.06 done and just click move to that and that will return me to um, the zero point then I can click define that point as home and it will move your piece to where your um, router is and then also if you do that if you set it there just for 
example, you can actually go measure on your piece if you're using a four bait sheet of plywood. You can actually measure that you're, you know, four feet over, two feet down, and right in the center of your piece. So that's a good reference rather than just being in some arbitrary spot. And of course, you can move the piece around to um, cut it, you know, if you want to move it, you know, say 10, 10 inches over to the left. Just go up here, select your distance, 10, done. Move your router over. Y'all may can hear it moving in the background on this microphone, I'm not sure, but. And then once that is done, once your router gets done moving, there may be an easier way to do this, but that's what I found so far. Just redefine your home and then your part moves over. So good to go. Now at this point, you're pretty much done. Um, in order to start cutting, start the process, um, just have to hit the green play button. I'm not going to do that because I've already cut this sled out. We'll show um, a little bit of footage of the router doing its thing. After that, just a matter of unbolting the hardware from the temporary sled, moving it over to the permanent sled, and um, you're good to go. So, hope you all have fun and enjoyed these videos and enjoy your Maslow. Have a good day. Don't forget to check out DIYHomesmiths.com. It'll have all the links to our social media accounts. And we also do make house plans, full house plans, for $20. Mm -hmm. And um, that's, that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to tune into the next video.